And I believe even in this moment, as we see in the natural, Katie, we see, you know, the things uh, accelerating. We see, you know, artificial intelligence. We see all these things naturally mm. are moving very quickly. Well, mm-hmm. this is a sign that God is also moving very quickly in the spirit. And if Christians would start to pull on what God is saying from the throne, we'll see an acceleration, not only in your ministry, your life, your health, uh, you, you know, your finances, everything that God has positioned you here on earth to do will experience divine acceleration if you'll pull on it. Yeah, honestly, guys, uh, I know God's on a speed train. I, yes. I, I've never been so clear about feeling this literally momentum of God just pushing the body of Christ sovereignly. I feel like it's a corporate sovereign move of God that God is wow. breathing on everyone that's positioned themselves in the secret place and in prayer and fasting, God is breathing on them to release glory for massive momentum and acceleration. Can you guys speak into that? My goodness. Yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> it, when you look at Luke chapter two, it talks about, you know, Katie, when the Messiah was birthed, when Jesus came to the earth, there was a glory that came into the earth in that moment that the world had never seen before. And actually it says in Luke chapter four, that the fields were ablaze with the glory of God. Mm. And this is where the glory is in the field. This is why we have to get out of the four walls of the church. We have to go out into the fields, the fire, the glory is in the harvest fields right now. Mm. It's time for us to go out into the harvest fields begin to reap a harvest, begin to bring souls in. I'm talking about miracles, signs, wonders. I mean, you're seeing miracles everywhere you go when you go uh, out into the fields, into prisons, wherever it is. You know, when I was in Africa, uh, we, we had a powerful crusade that we did there. So many miracles, so much deliverance. Uh, then I was in Colombia for a week, same thing. You know, mm-hmm. and then everywhere we go, Josh and I, when we've done meetings, Uh, in Florida or in other places. It has just been a phenomenal outpouring of God's glory. Well, the glory is here for harvest. Uh, And so this is a time like like in unto those days uh, where the glory is coming like we've never seen, our eyes haven't seen, our ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into our heart yet, all that God has prepared for us, but it's here. The Mm. reality of heaven is here, it's now, but it's in the field, we're going to see miracles more than ever. And the greatest miracle is salvation, bringing somebody Mm. to the knowledge and the truth of Jesus Christ. Thank you. So that's my expectation. That's what I want to see in count, you know, bringing people to repentance, bringing people to the truth, to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And seeing God do miracles. My God. And, and, and I know you bear witness to that, Joshua. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, the acceleration and the harvest that Miles is uh, talking about is so phenomenal because we are seeing that, there again, there's such a great hunger for the what's real. You see so many people out there venturing into Wicca and, and the occult and mm-hmm. witchcraft. There's an internal desire for the supernatural and it's increasing. And we as believers cannot be some watered down, you know, uh, some mess over here, you know, not demonstrating the kingdom of God, but we must bring forth the demonstration of the kingdom so that these people can come out of darkness. I'm reminded of uh, experience I had earlier in the year that I, I spoke with Sid on. And I was taken in the spirit and God showed me the whole earth and I saw chaos that was coming. And I was so terrified in that moment, like, oh my gosh, what is about to hit the earth? I immediately turned and went to run to the prayer mountain to pray. But the moment I turned to go pray, I heard the father speak, you can't pray this away. And immediately I turned back to the earth and I began to cry out weeping. I'm just weeping upon my my eyes and, and, and the internal groaning within me. And I began to yell to the earth, repent, renounce your sin. 
And wow. as they did that, there was a spiritual bubble that came over them like a like an ark. And I knew God was creating a spiritual Goshen. And so in the aspect of repentancy and renouncing and turning away your sin, no matter what hits the earth, God is going to protect his people. But it's a now thing. And see, his heart is for souls. He wants to bring it as many into this covering as possible. And it's up to us as servants, flames of fire to go out there and snatch people to awaken them to what God is doing in the earth. Oh my God. You know, I, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, Prophet Tommy even says that, that, you know, what's coming, we can't even pray or fast our way out of. Mm -hmm. We need to be prepared for it. And we need to prepare by building a Goshen, by building an ark. And that's what we are doing down here, dog, Francie and I down here in Florida. You know, Miles, you came down and you saw what we have down here. You know, <laughs> we have a whole compound down here with all of us living like acts on steroids together. <laughs> um, it's really fun. You saw it. <clears throat> I did. It was awesome. And, you know, God is doing that with people all over the earth, all over the nation. He's he's leading people to build these, you know, these spiritual hubs. You know, um, that's what I'm doing here in Brunswick, Georgia. I'm building a spiritual hub, uh, apostolic prophetic hub. Josh is doing the same thing. God has given him instruction and he's building hubs in different cities and so um so that people can come into the ark of safety they can come in to that place of goshen you know and if you're if you recall that in when it during that time when plagues were hitting and everything like that um god's people were safe from plagues from sickness from disease it couldn't touch them mm -hmm. from you know famines all of these things it could not touch their lives. Mm. And so there's a safe place, Katie, you know, in the presence of God, in the glory of God, where the devil can't touch you. Amen. Yeah. There is a place of rest. There's a place of safety. And people need to hear this today because there are people, look, Daniel 7, 25, the spirit of Antichrist is working overtime to try to wear out the saints, to change times, laws, and season, or time, seasons, and laws. And, you know, working to wear us out. But see, that's why it's the time of the glory. We have to transition from the anointing to the glory. Why? Because if you're still just operating in the anointing and you haven't transitioned yet, the anti-anointing is going to wear you out. Wow. But one thing that the anti-anointing, the anti-Christ can't do is touch the glory. Wow. And so we have to make the transition now. We have to transition to Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, mm. O ye ancient abiding doors, that the King of glory may come in. Now, Katie, that's us. We are the ancient abiding gateways. We are the ancient Thank door. You, we just came into a new Hebrew year, 5784, yep. mm. the year of the open door. Amen. Well, who's that door? The warfare that we're experiencing right now is over the glory. Mm. Amen. Because the devil doesn't want people to transition into the glory realm. Mm. So he's doing everything that he can to try to block the gateway, to try to keep the door shut in our lives. Wow. The warfare is at the door. But you know mm. what? God is, cause, God is overthrowing the overthrow. He's causing the ancient abiding doors to be open, to fling wide open. And mm. the instruction in Psalm 24 he gives us, lift up your head. O ye gates, come on! O ye ancient abiding doors, that the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord of Hosts is His name. Thank you, Lord. That's where I believe we're at. Man, I do too. A prophetic intercessor of ours, Barbara Rucci, had a dream, guys, and I, I, I think I mentioned it to you, Miles. Was that she had a dream that somebody was in a garage, which represents ministry. A lot of people were actually in this garage, and they were all spraying these hubcaps blue well i believe those hubcaps are the hubs that we are all building to create a goshen to create an ark of safety a place a tent a, a, a building a place a farm whatever it is to people can go and get fed uh taken care of but also healed delivered broken free but it takes the glory guys to build it joshua talk about that because i don't know if everybody even understands how to build the cloud. 
My goodness. You know, I'm I'm feeling this this scripture so strongly right now. Amos 3 7. Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plans to his servants, the prophets. All right. And so I know God is uh, God is beginning to move in a way that is supernatural, unusual, but Satan's uh, plan is to bring distraction. We see social media. We see all these things that are increasing entertainment, Netflix. And what he's trying to do is trying to remove Issachar prophets. There's another scripture, Jeremiah 23, 18. It says, has any of these prophets been in the Lord's presence to hear what he is really saying? Has anyone cared enough to listen? I believe Satan's agenda is really to bring such a strong delusion and distraction through wow. entertainment, through social media, through so many different facets that people aren't even in the presence of God to hear what is coming, wow. what is happening. And it's crazy because... Katie, you know, we have to be on social media. We all do. This is this is a tool that God is using. Wow. But I'm believing that the leaders in the body of Christ are unbalanced. And I see this in the spirit that so many of them are so concerned with the likes, the shares, the followers, mm. all these metrics that Satan knows is psychological. And actually, he's tuned these things into the way social media is to constantly keep people stuck right here. Oh, wow. And so there's nothing wrong with using it as a tool, but we got to get back into the presence of God to hear what he is saying. It says, if they would have stood before me and listened to me, they would have spoken my words. They would have turned my people away from their evil deeds and unto me. Nobody's doing that right now. We have to come to a place where we're calling people back to repentance, Thank back you. to the feet of God, back to what God is saying and do his will because Satan is, he knows his time is short and he's doing everything he can to distract prophetic people. I love that scripture. It says that you didn't stand in my presence so you couldn't hear you couldn't what hear. I was saying to you. You know what, Josh, yeah. I want you to minister out of that. This is yeah. big. I mean, the this this device, our phones have captured us, and it's one thing to watch prophetic teaching, uh, prophetic releases, um, you know, biblical teaching and all that. But we're straying off and watching other mm -hmm. stuff that is literally bringing death to us. It's distracting yeah. us. It's not feeding our souls. It's not increasing our spiritual uh, authority. Can you go in right now oh, to yes. everybody that's watching and start? Lead them to repentance for the social yes. media addiction. Lead, break it off of them. Yes. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice, that the powers of distraction and confusion would be broken off of their soul right now in the name of Jesus. Even demon doctrines, doctrines of devils that have entered into their mind to structure strongholds, to shift them from the very narrow road that God is leading them down would be destroyed right now. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, I want you to say, I renounce every idol in Jesus name. I I renounce every evil covenant in the name of Jesus. Every distraction that has been placed in my soul as an idol, making me resist God, may it be removed right now in the name of Jesus. I repent for all of my sin. I repent for being distracted. I repent for looking at the, the shiny thing that's dangling before my eyes. I repent for looking at someone else's page, someone else's following, comparing myself to others instead of being focused on what you have called me to do here in the earth. In the name of Jesus, keep my heart focused. Keep my eyes fixed on you in the name of Jesus. And just as Jesus said to his disciples, I have food that you know not. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. May God grant you the ability to do his will so that you come out of every spiritual malnourishment in the name of Jesus. May you be nourished by doing his will in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Well. Amen to that one. Miles, uh, what do you have to say? People really don't know how to build a glory cloud. They don't know how to build the presence. Um, they don't understand. And there are the things like Joshua said that are they're, they're allowing to be in their way. Can you go into that even further? Well, yeah, um, it's very true. You know, like Josh was touching on, the biggest tool of the enemy really is distraction. Um, if he can distract you, if he can get you thrown off, if he can get your attention, uh, that's all he needs. It doesn't take, you know, 12 principalities showing up over your house, 
you know, uh, yeah. which is showing up at your doorstep. You know, all it takes is a little bit of distraction from, uh, you know, these uh, worldly things that you have around you. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, mm -hmm. the boastful pride of life. And so, Katie, you know, really what uh, we need is time with Jesus, time in his mm -hmm. presence. You know, when you look at like Acts chapter four, the, the sign that they recognized, you know, because the glory of God was manifesting around the apostles, they said, we recognize that you are the ones that have been with Jesus. Wow, Amen. come on. And, yeah. and, and so, <laughs> you know, and then, the, and then when you look at the life of Jesus, actually one of my favorite scriptures is Acts 2.22. It talks about how God affirmed his son through signs, wonders, and miracles. Mm. Well, why was there, the affirmation was on his life because Jesus would spend hours with the father and then he would go out and do what he saw the father do. Amen. He would release what the father was showing him. Wow. Uh, and so it's really time, um, spending time with God, um, allowing God to build your spiritual capacity, allowing him to smear himself on you. Uh, really, it's taking time to absorb and soak the, in the presence of God mm -hmm. that we're changed that we're transformed yes. uh, in our lives. And so, you know, and it's also a place we have to get out of the flesh. Amen. And this is a lot of people's problems uh, in Christians included, is that we're still very carnal. We're still very fleshly in the way that we think, in the way that we conduct ourselves. Why? Because we haven't spent time in the mm. presence of God Gosh. where we come, we repent, we lay our lives, our lives down before the Lord and invite him in. You know, Acts 3.19 says, mm. repent so that times of refreshing may come in the presence of God. Amen. And so what invites the presence? Repentance. Thank you, Lord. We have to apply that personally, yeah. individually in our lives. And, you know, going back to Psalm uh, or Jeremiah 23, Jeremiah 23 talks, Jeremiah addresses false prophets. He, he begins to talk about how they've drinking, uh, been drinking of uh, wormwood, which um, wow. the spirit of wormwood. OK, what is the spirit of wormwood? The spirit of wormwood. Well, first of all, wormwood is a bitter herb. Mm. The spirit of wormwood, when people drink and partake of it, it, it causes them to think that they are right with God when they're really not. Wow. Mm. Did you catch that? Yeah. Okay. When you're drinking and partaking of the spirit of wormwood, which is something that is increasingly prevalent in the last days, and actually in the book of Revelation, it says that there will be a star that comes from heaven mm. into the earth that is named wormwood and will poison one third of the waters. <sighs> Um, amen. And but the spirit of wormwood, when people drink of this, uh, there's bitterness, there's resentment, there's offense. Jesus said offenses will come. OK, mm. that's you know, what tests your maturity. If you can carry the glory of God is if do you still take up offenses? Wow. Come on. Absolutely. Do you still take up an offense? Well, if you still take up offenses, you cannot carry the glory of God. Wow. Wow. We yeah. have to repent yeah. and renounce taking up offenses if we want to be glory carriers in yeah. this time. <laughs> you can't take up offenses and carry his glory. Oh, you man. can't carry both. Oh, oh come on. It, Hallelujah. Come on. No You're preaching my message. In his presence. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Did you hear that, guys? And you cannot carry the glory if you're carrying bitterness and offense. You know, Numbers 5 says that the woman that drank the bitter water, her belly would swell and her thigh would rot. You see people gaining weight. You see people losing their strength. You see people having muscle atrophy. It says in Job that one dies in bitterness of soul while the other has marrow and moistening in their bones. It's like mm. your, your body's going to get stronger if you're not bitter, if you're not offended. It's going to get weaker if you are. Miles, I need you to roll into that preach right there. And lead people in repentance of bitterness and break that off of them once and for all. Come on. I, I really do. I feel the glory of the Lord on this right now. Father, I just thank you. For those watching right now, if you, you've been offended, 
I mean, I'm talking about offended over stupid stuff, offended with people in church, church hurt. You mm -hmm. know, everybody wants to talk about church hurt. You're, it's offense that you've taken up. Just repent right now from all these offenses, things that have come. The devil has tried to come to see if you'll take up an offense and walk in it. Well, you can't carry the glory if you're carrying offense. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. we repent right now from every offense that we've Jesus. taken up, everywhere that we've become bitter in spirit, in heart, in our soul, bitterness in our soul, everywhere that we've drank from the spirit of wormwood, we still think that we're right with God, yet we're walking and carrying offense Jesus. and carrying bitterness in our souls. God, we repent right now. We ask you to deliver us by the blood of Jesus, now deliver us, God, in the name of Jesus. Deliver us from this deception and where we've drank from the spirit of wormwood and become bitter in our souls. And we are literally rotting. God says he wants to release his glory upon you to deliver you from this deception. He'll remove the scales off of your eyes that you would begin to see the truth and where you're walking in deception and where you've taken up offenses, God will reveal it. And you know, I hear the Lord saying, there's somebody watching right now, and God is healing you from throat cancer. Thank you. Literally right now. God is healing you from throat cancer. God is healing people's eyes right now. In the name of Jesus, people that have glaucoma, people that have different kinds of issues, uh, like blurry vision, uh, even you might be blind in one eye or something. God's healing you right now. Once you release that offense and that bitterness and give it to God, you're going to notice you're, you're immediately the glory of God is going to be restored to your life. The moment that you repent from it, the glory is being restored right now. I prophesy that in Jesus' name. Honestly, that's uh, these things that you guys are bringing to the table. The distraction of social media, the bitterness. These things, guys, if we can just slough off these things, let them go. Cut the soul yeah. ties that you have with them. You will get healed in your body. You will be a glory carrier. Uh, it, it, that's just the way it is. So stop getting mad at everything. Stop getting distracted by everything. Stop leaning into social media as an idol to, yes. to soothe the pain in your soul. Start running to Jesus.